we wake Hear the birds and see the sun Side by side our fears are done All the good times just begun Um, we know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy, but things are finally right With you and I, the future is bright Hey everybody, it's Mickey, and in today's memory keeping how-to video, I am sharing how to store and sort your photos, what tools you'll need to get started, and we are going to jump right in and complete our first pages. So if you are new to scrapbooking or have just been away for a little while, this video is for you. Memory keeping is all about photos. So of course, the most important thing is for you to get your pictures off of your phone and off of your computer and have them printed. There are many online sites that you can upload your photos to and have them printed out at a very reasonable price. And there are also at-home printers that you can purchase. If you're like me, you have boxes and boxes of photos that we need to sort and store to keep them safe and organized. The best photo storage system that I have come across are these boxes that you can find at Michaels and Amazon. I will be sure to leave a link down below for you. Inside, they have 16 individual cases that hold about 100 photos each. So this is plenty enough room for you to sort out a big old box of photos. I like to sort my photos into general categories. This way you can get a really good idea as to what kind of scrapbook pages that you're going to be working on. And these little boxes have several spots that you can put a little label on to identify what's inside. Now, once you have your photos sorted into general categories, you want to sort them again into individual events like birthday parties, vacations, or graduation. To do this, I like to create little folders for myself where I can hold all those pictures for a specific event together for when I'm ready to get them into albums. Now, to do this, I take a regular plain sheet of paper, fold up the bottom edge to make a pocket. Then I fold the sheet in half and then cut a little notch from the top. This is where I write in the event that the photos are a part of and then I add the pictures to the folder, set it aside for when I'm ready to work in my books. Choosing a photo album is really an individual thing. Now personally, I like 12 by 12 albums because they give you the most room and the most real estate to work with. I primarily use two different types of albums. The first one I use for my children's books and they are from Creative Memories. They are post-bound albums where you create your layout right on the page and add a page protector over top. The second is a ring bound album from We Are Memory Keepers. I like these albums because they have different types of page protectors available. So you can either do a 12 by 12 page or you can also do a page where the page protector is broken down into multiple slots where you just add the photos. I've gathered together here some tools and supplies that you may need for your scrapbooking project. Now some of these supplies are really essential while others are extra, so why don't we start first on the supplies that I think are really essential for any project. One of the most important things that you're going to need is a good adhesive. You want to be sure that they are acid free and photo safe and these Tombow dot adhesive tape runners are excellent. I have used these for years. You can find them in almost any craft store and of course on Amazon. One of the reasons that I like using these is that of course they're simple to use. They close up so that you can toss it in your bag if you're going to another location to scrapbook and they are refillable. You can buy extra cartridges so that you can have a supply on hand so you never run out. 
Whenever you do any type of paper craft, it is really important that you get yourself a specific pair of scissors. Now, they don't have to be expensive, they don't have to be specialized, they just have to be a pair of scissors that you only use to cut paper. I have used this set from Provo Craft for years. This is a set that I use whenever I do any type of paper crafting or scrapbooking. I love that they are three different sizes to do, you know, three different jobs. The one pair that I use so often is this really thin pair for intricate paper cutting, which you may not use very often if you're just beginning scrapbooking, but I have found that these are really great to cut around designs on your scrapbook paper and to add embellishments to your page. Another tool that you may want to pick up, but it is not essential, is a corner rounder. Now this particular one is from Creative Memories and no lie, it's probably about 12 or 15 years old. It still works perfectly. What it does, it just takes the pointed edge of your photo and cuts it in a rounded shape. I use this a lot of times if I am putting multiple pictures on a page and I have cut them down or crop them down. This is a tool that really makes everything look nice and uniform on your page. Another important tool would be a paper cutter. This one is from Cricut, but there are several others that come in different sizes that you can find at the craft stores. Whenever you scrapbook, you really do cut down a lot of your scrapbooking paper to mat your photos or to add an embellishment to the size of your page and having a good paper cutter on hand really does make that job so much easier. Some of the other supplies that you may want for your projects are some of my most favorite. I really do like to do a lot of embellishing on my pages. I love stickers and I love pattern paper. The papers that you pick for your scrapbooking projects you want to be sure again are photo safe and acid free. Just look for those papers that are for card making and of course for memory keeping. The pattern paper is really great because oftentimes it's printed on both sides so that you can get a lot of use out of it. You're going to want to pick yourself up a pack of cardstock. Now these packs come in multiple colors. You can have an assorted color pack. There's so many to choose from. Just walk down the scrapbooking aisle at any of your craft stores to pick whatever that you want. Now, stickers are really awesome because they really do, I think, make your page special and anymore you can find stickers, any design or for any event that you can possibly need. Now that we have our photos sorted, our albums picked out, our supplies gathered, we are ready to get to work. Today we're going to be doing three page layouts using my daughter's high school senior portraits. I am going to be using pattern paper and some stickers from the Simple Vintage Country Harvest Collection from Simple Stories that I purchased on scrapbooks.com. The first page we are going to make here is what I refer to as a cover page. This is going to be the first page in the album. These pages will also be very simple as to the elements that we're going to be using. They are mostly just paper paper elements, cut border shapes, matted photos with just a few embellishments. There is always a lot of discussion on how many photos should be on each of your pages, and I really think it's completely your choice, especially in this case where the photographs are of a very special event. I do think that whatever photo you choose, that should be the focus of your page because you don't want to get your photos lost in the design. And remember, these are books that you create from the memories of your family. You should create them with the photos, memorabilia, and stories that are most important to you. Most of the pages in my scrapbook usually have a title. You can create titles in several different ways. You can use die cut phrases, alphabet stickers, or you can create them on your own using a Cricut cutting machine. I'll be sharing different ways to use your Cricut for memory keeping in future videos, but today I am just creating a short title for our cover page using my Cricut Joy. I think titles are really important to ground your page and to give a quick explanation about what the pictures are in reference to. For this page, I created a title stating senior year as this will be the beginning cover page in our scrapbook that will contain events and memories from Rebecca's senior year of high school.
Moving on to our next two pages is going to be a double page spread containing more shots from Rebecca's senior portraits. My children are always my favorite subjects of any photos that I take, so there are several different poses from this collection. On these two pages, I'm going to show you how simply a page can be laid out on solid colored cardstock using colored and patterned paper, cut in shapes and borders. Oftentimes when doing a two page spread, I like to create symmetrical designs to give the layout balance, meaning I simply repeat elements on each page on opposite sides. Journaling is also a very important component to your memory keeping. I left an area open on this page to go back and include memories from this time. You know, back when I used to teach scrapbooking classes, so many people would complain that they didn't think they had good enough handwriting and they were worried that it would just ruin their page. I feel that your handwriting is way more important than how it looks. I know that I could pick out my mom or dad's handwriting anywhere and how important their written words are to me. We need to remember that our written words will be just as important to our families. So don't worry so much about how it looks and just try to do your best to include the important details and emotions behind the photos. As you can see, there's really nothing fancy on these pages and it's come together really quickly. Remember, memory keeping does not have to be complicated or works of art to be important. It can truly be uniquely yours. Now, I am very behind in my books. These photos are from my daughter's senior year of high school and she has just recently graduated from college. I have lots of boxes full of photos and will be really concentrating on getting those pictures into books and I would really love for you guys to come along with me. In upcoming videos, I'd like to share different page ideas that are uncomplicated and simple so that we can recreate them over and over again so that we can get our photos into books. Let me know in the comments section down below if this is something that you guys would really like to see. Memory keeping is really important to me and getting my kids photos and memorabilia into books will take some time. So let me know down below what you would like to see and if this is something you would be interested in because I would really love to do videos for you. So thank you all so much for watching today. Please join our communities over on Facebook and Instagram at My Bashful Life, and don't forget to subscribe. I'd love to have you all back as part of our YouTube family. So until I see you in that next video, I hope that you love the life that you have. Be kind to each other, stay safe, and I will see you again soon. Bye.